The term visual snow is, is not old, probably 10 to 12 years or so. Before that, there was no term. It was one of the problems. I think the patients were regarded as either having migraine aura, which was clearly wrong, or sadly they're regarded as more or less crazy. So I think there was no really, there was no real term for the problem, which has been part of the problem, no, no way of uh, labelling, describing, categorising it so that could, one could study it. Probably, I don't have a real date on that from a clinical point of view, but I would guess it, it, it was virtually unknown until the 70s or 80s and the early internet where people started talking about these symptoms of visual snow on a, on a mass basis. Prior to that, I can probably find a reference somewhere in a textbook or in an academic paper talking about it under a different name back into the 50s. Uh, whether anyone ever recorded that data farther back in the 50s, I'm not aware of. Uh, visual snow has been recognized under other rubrics for many, many years. There are descri descriptions of persistent visual symptoms going back uh, into the middle of the last century, um, when even I was young. Um, the uh, reality is that it was specifically identified uh, by Grant Liu in 1995 or 1996. He published a paper where he differentiated visual snow from migraine with persistent visual disturbances. And he differentiated, the paper was really about uh, migraine with persistent visual disturbances and the significant risk of stroke in those patients. And yet there was a subgroup, uh, about five or six patients, uh, that he hived off that had visual snow. And I can't remember if he quite used the term, but the syndrome itself has really been recognised as a separate syndrome since that time. I think historically it's been identified, but recognised as a disorder of the brain, that would be only in the last few years. It's certainly only come to my attention in the last 12 to 15 months, once we started having a look at these individuals and identifying that we found there were changes that weren't psychological in origin. 50 years ago, it was considered to be a variant of migraine. Visual snow has been around forever. It's not new. Um, it's, uh, and the further you go back, you can find uh, descriptions uh, in, in literature, and I can't quote those at the moment. But uh, the reality is that um, it is as, uh, only recently it's been called visual snow. It was usually attributed to migraine or it was considered to be attention-seeking behaviour, neurotic behaviour, and in some cases, psychotic behaviour. Uh, and patients were almost routinely uh, referred to psychiatrists 20, 30 years ago, routinely referred to psychiatrists for management of their uh, neurosis. Uh, and what they learned from that was that it was a good thing not to complain. That didn't take their symptoms away. I think 50 years ago, patients with this symptom would, would have either seen an eye doctor, which is pretty much what happens now, or seen a neurologist. And the eye doctor would tell them that their eyes are normal and tell them not to worry. That would be the extent of it, which is pretty much what happens, very often happens now. And the neurologist would either say, it's unusual and screw their face up, or if they're interested in migraine or migraine, they might say, well, we think it's a form of migraine, but it's not quite right. So I, I think that, one of the problems has been what people have been told is it has been pretty vague because we haven't had a way of, uh, of categorising the problem. In 1918, uh, they would have told you, get on with it, Sonny. There's nothing wrong with you. They wouldn't have been given a diagnosis at all because in those days they didn't tolerate what they considered to be psychological issues. This was before Freud's ideas of psychiatry had been properly promulgated they wouldn't have been given a diagnosis. They would have been considered to be uh, uh, malingering or um, attention seeking rather than anything else. That would have still been true in 1948. and uh, It was still true in probably 1960. Uh, in 1970, we started uh, to be a little more sensitive and think that maybe it was part of the migraine syndromes. Uh, 1980s, uh, when I came back into uh, main practice, I think most people were considering it to be a migraine phenomenon. 
So it's evolved over a period of time, but it's now become recognised as it is as a separate syndrome.